In this short video, I'll show you how the new StreamSets data collector JDBC multi-table consumer can uh, ingest an entire database from uh, MySQL and write it into Hive. So uh, here's my pipeline, and I describe it in detail in the uh, accompanying blog post. I'm just going to call out some of the high points here. So uh, I've got the multi-table consumer here. I've got my connection string to uh, MySQL database on Amazon uh, RDS. And uh, one thing to call out here, and this is a MySQL peculiarity. Uh, by default, MySQL runs in um, uh, a mode called repeatable read, uh, transaction isolation of repeatable read, which means that if we um, make repeated queries, we always get the same data. So that's not what we, want, what we want when data is changing. So we change the transaction isolation to read committed. So that's definitely uh, something you should look at with, uh, with MySQL. So what I'm doing is I'm ingesting uh, every table, so the percentage wildcard, in the uh, retail DB schema. And what I want to do is filter out personally identifiable data, okay? We don't want any PII in the data warehouse. And the only table that's in is uh, my customers table. So I filter out any records with JDBC tables set to customers, and I send them through the field remover, and that's just going to remove first name, last name, email, password, and street. So um, those will just get removed from the records and sent through uh, this Hive metadata processor. What this is going to do is examine the records and when it detects a schema, incoming schema that's not already in Hive, it'll create metadata that's sent to uh, the Hive Metastore. And then the actual data records are written directly into the uh, Hadoop file system here. Uh, another thing I've done here is to set the idle timeout to a second. So I'm going to see data as it changes really quickly. Don't do this in production. You'll end up with loads of little files. You really want big files in a Hadoop file system. Now, the last thing is, that's going to happen, you can see there's some more pipeline over here, is uh, as the Hadoop um, file system destination closes files, and as the Hive Metastore uh, makes updates to Hive, um, I actually want to tell Impala what's happening. So. Impala can read those Hive tables, um, but it caches its own metadata. It needs to know when we've made changes. So what I do here is I make sure I've got a table field set to the right expression when we're writing to uh, the file name. This is all documented, and uh, I actually uh, run a query in the... Uh, this is the Impala endpoint, even though it's using the Hive uh, JDBC driver. I'm using Impala here and I'm saying invalidate metadata on uh, the table that we just uh, wrote to. So uh, what I've done is I've actually already ingested uh, last night. I ingested all of the uh, records in the database and we can go have a look here. We can look at the summary of the ingestion. So I ingested quarter of a million records. And we can actually even drill down here into a bit of detail. So I ingested, uh, let's see, 254,934 into that uh, multi-table consumer. And the interesting bit here is in the Hive metadata, it actually emits a few more records than it uh, that it uh, receives. Because what happens is that the data records go to the Hadoop file system, and then the metadata gets goes to the uh, Hive Metastore. So that's there were seven uh, tables, so that's seven um, create table statements. And we can go have a look at the data here. So here we're over at uh, MySQL. So if we say, let's see, show tables, we can see the seven tables. And over here, we can do the same thing. And what I did was I actually added this retail DB prefix because I could be ingesting tables from a whole bunch of different databases. I don't want any name collisions. 
Uh, I did that here in the Hive metadata uh, processor. And what I did was I said the table name is retail DB and then whatever the record, uh, whatever the originating table was for that record. So that's a really, really nice way of um, uh, differentiating uh, data in the warehouse that's come from different, uh, different sources. And I can see here if I do select count star from, uh, let's see, there's, uh, there's plenty of orders in the database. I can see there's 68,000 of those and I can actually go and verify uh, the exact same here, thing here. I just need to remember that uh, retail DB prefix. Uh, see the 68,883 there. And I can even do things like select star from orders. Uh, let's see, um, order by order ID descending limit five. Just get the last five orders there. And then, then I can do exactly the same thing on, uh, on this side to just to verify that um, the data is there. So if we see there, we've got the last five orders there, uh, 68883 down to 68879. Uh, and you can see there, it's all exactly replicated. So this is really neat. I've uh, lifted over a quarter of a million rows out of MySQL and put them into, um, into Hive. Um, what is even uh, cooler is that um, I can start up this uh, pipeline again. And what it's doing is it's keeping track of, uh, it's keeping track of records in all of the tables uh, by their primary key. So for instance, with this orders table, it's basically doing a select every few seconds to say, Okay, are there any orders with order ID greater than 68883? Um, I'm going to actually work with the departments table because it's kind of a manageable size. If I say select star from departments here, I can see the seven departments here, fitness up to, uh, well, actually the six, there's no department number one for some reason, but uh, I can do the same thing here on the uh, hive side via Impala and see we've got the six there. So the really, really cool thing I can do is as I create departments, I can say, I've got some canned uh, SQL here, just to insert a, a new department, I can say, insert SQL, select star from departments, and I can uh, see I've added uh, department ID number eight, uh, the kids department. Over in uh, stream sets, We've uh, processed that record. What that means is that we sent it into a uh, rotor file into the Hadoop file system. We um, evaluated that expression. We sent um, a record. Actually, we can follow this around. We can see that. Um, so it's gone uh, through the stream selector through stream number two. It wasn't a customer record. It's gone through output one of the Hive metadata. There was no metadata change, so it's gone into the file, the Hadoop file system. Uh, we had one input record, uh, and it produced an event. It's gone through the evaluator, and it's gone into the uh, to produce a Hive query. So it's invalidated the metadata, and in that time, we should be able to go over to uh, Impala here, and just do another select star from retail DB departments. And uh, with a bit of luck, we should see department ID number eight kids uh, is there in uh, in Hive. So um, there we have it. We lifted, uh, basically did a replication of over a quarter of a million rows, this retail database from uh, MySQL. We filtered out uh, PII. We automatically created uh, those tables in Hive and wrote the data in, and we're able to um, uh, pick up the new rows that are created. The pipeline's running continuously. We can create, pick up new rows as they're created, feed them through into Hive, and then uh, automatically um, uh, notify 
uh, impala of the change so that we can straight away go and uh, see those changes from uh, impala shell thanks for watching